Hey everyone, welcome to the Dad Challenge Podcast Sunday Special. I don't do these very often, but sometimes I like doing them. We're talking about church stuff, and I think you guys all know where I stand on that. I'm absolutely kind of in the world of like anti-church right now, pro-Christian, pro-Jesus, but anti-church. Someone sent me a video of this pastor, just, I've never heard of this guy, like I've sort of heard of him in passing, but holy shit balls, Pastor Greg Locke? <gasps> Let's get into it. So I came across this TikTok. Her name is Duchess Prim. <laughs> and it's, I don't know about her, but she's, it's the perfect name for who she looks like. She's, yes. I agree, Duchess Prim. So I got this this video of Pastor Greg Locke from his stage. I, I, this guy's crazy. Like, as an ex-pastor, I think even pastors don't, I'm going to claim this guy, who, who, are, who are still pastors, like, hey, 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 Greg Locke, we don't claim that guy. He doesn't even go here, I promise. Greg Locke is one of the biggest hypocrites in the entire world. There's, a, there's an article out there about him, about uh, what's going on in his world. But I want to show you Duchess Prim's video first, because she's awesome. <laughs> I just want to show you this. So this is his new wife, apparently. First kissed you. Just take a good look at her, okay? Y'all didn't see that, right? She titled it, When He Loves You Like Christ Loves the Church. That's Greg Locke's new wife. You know, his former assistant who he had an affair with, allegedly. <laughs> Ty, honey, did he love his ex-wife like Christ loved the church? While he was spitting on her, beating her, fat shaming her, and wishing her dead via text? If you haven't seen the text messages, I have them. I'll send them to you. Can you send them to me? I'd like to see them. No, by the looks of your page, I don't think you give a shit about any of that. I think you just like this weird form of fame and the money. I mean, that video with Roger Stone just tells me everything I need to know. So when you come to figure out that he is exactly who we've all been saying he is, don't come crying to us. Because karma is a bitch. Ooh, that's... Something tells me don't mess with the Duchess is what something tells me. So I started doing a little bit of a deeper dive and I'm going to, um, obviously just a, just a hair, you know me. I just, I like to learn with you. I like to just kind of do this together. So I, I got this article from black Christian news. So take that from, for what it is. I don't know what that is, but they got an article on it. So ex-wife of popular Christian internet pastor, Greg Locke says he spit on her and he hit her and he shares text messages. He sent cursing her. This is a pastor. Everybody. If you have any scandals, like even one of Greg Locke's scandals, it's time to step down. You're a distraction. You can't preach the gospel from a stage while being this type of person. You just can't do it. And there are pastors who have stepped down for way less than Pastor Greg has done. I'm not, stop, I'm not even going to call him Pastor Greg. Asshole Greg is what we're going to call him. So Greg Locke is a conservative pastor from an evangelical church in Tennessee. He's best known for his popular Facebook presence, which features selfie videos, which he delivers sermons like the ones below, but targets gender neutral bathrooms in which he details his questioning of customer service representatives, 18 million views. The scariest part about this is that he's got 18 million views on a video that people agree with a Christian bashing anybody for any reason whatsoever. Look, Christians might not agree with LGBTQ stances and all that kind of stuff it, because it's what they believe the Bible says is wrong. Okay. But at the same time, the Bible, oh, Jesus also tells you to love people. So where is the love? Is there any love or are you just going to are you just going to throw people away? Is there going to be a time in the modern church where you're just going to love people like you're supposed to? You might find that it will work better. Just saying. But Locke's personal life is in shambles. He's divorced from his wife whom he has four children including two that were adopted. She's now living in a woman's shelter in another state. While he says that she's mentally ill. Okay, so uh the church that supports Greg Locke that ties there, why are you still there? His ex-wife is living in a woman's shelter and you, none of you are going to help her. These people that claim to know Jesus, you know, the one Jesus said that, you know, clothe the naked, feed the hungry, that those, that Jesus, that's the one that you guys worship. That's no, no, nothing. Okay. No, it makes sense because most churches do that too. I get it. He's also fending off charges that he's an adulterer who has started seeing his ex-wife's best friend. <sighs> I don't use twat very often, but today the word is used. If you do that, you're a twat. Other Christians have attacked him, calling him a failure for getting divorced, claiming he sent his wife away and alleging that he has a new girlfriend who was a church secretary. It's, it's allegations, but okay. 
A new report cited by Pathos Friendly Atheist column shows the situation may be worse as known. The report follows a Christian blogger who met with Locke's estranged wife, Melissa, at a restaurant in Georgia, where she now lives in a woman's shelter. Among the text messages shared with the blogger were messages in which he called her a deceitful bitch and suggested she was putting on weight. Again, if there's proof, and there is, because Duchess has proof of it, I'm sure I'll show you in a minute, um, step down. Nope, you're not allowed to uh, be a pastor anymore. Nope, you can just go be a regular guy. You're not allowed to grift people while being this type of guy. Melissa Locke also said that her now ex-husband had hit her twice, spit on her, and smashed her phone. This guy sounds real classy. The vitro with Greg Locke addressed his wife of 20 years in these text messages as unbecoming of any man, especially a Christian pastor. Well, yeah, exactly. Melissa Locke also told the blogger that Greg Locke, his adulterous plans for his church secretary, Ty McGee, who is Melissa's best friend, well, ex-best friend. Hey, Ty McGee, you're a dirt and you'll always be a dirt now. Everybody in your church who even still goes there, they think you're a dirt. They're knitting and their little groups and their little Bible studies. They're talking shit about you and they should be because you're shit. So are you, Pastor Greg Locke, you shit bag. But at the end, it's Pastor Greg Locke. He's the shit bag. Ty, you should know better. You're talking about being a woman of God. You can suck Greg's ass because don't come near me. Via Facebook, Locke maintains it's all made up. Well, we believe you. We, we totally believe you. To read such vicious lies and out-of-context things about the situation, people are ignorant of it. It's completely disabling. Of course, we said crazy, regretful, and angry things in messages. Oh, so you admit it. Okay, good. Okay, got it. You, you admitted it. Mm-hmm. That's what happens when a relationship is going through such bitter unraveling and emotions in high gear. She didn't wrong you, Greg. Okay? Asshole Greg. She didn't wrong you at all. She's your wife. She has your kids. You know, she bore your children. The Bible says is healthy. You have two adopted kids and you fat shamed her. You hit her. You spit on her. You broke her shit. You, you had her living in a toxic situation. You think she had mental health issues? Probably because of you. If you have any doubts about Pastor Greg Locks, this is what drew me to him initially. This video right here. Now, this is, came up in a post in Public Freakout, which is one of my favorite Reddit forums. This is Pastor Greg Locke threatens to expose six witches who are members of his church. Now, I was going to cover this from a different angle. And I still will, but I'm also now realizing that he's a complete and utter twat. And so we're going to cover it from both angles. But if you're ever wondering and have doubts about Pastor Greg Locke's vitriol towards other human beings, his wife and people like that, watch this shit. We got first and last names of six witches that are in our church. And you know what's strange? Three of you are in this room right now. Why is that strange? And your LED wall's broken. A-hole. You can tell this is all right QAnon type of like religious shit, okay? If you guys really want to know what QAnon shit looks like, this is it, okay? This is the type of person you should be looking at, not someone who sits, you know, in the center politically. This guy is nuts. First of all, he's a pastor, cheats on his wife with his wife's best friend, abuses her, and forces her to live in a woman's shelter? Yo, you're rich, bro. Give her some cash, asshat. I don't know what's going on with that, but if you're the ex-wife of Pastor Greg Locke, I would love to interview you on this show. And also, this 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 podium is shit. It's garbage. I don't care. It looks like it's just garbage. But anyway, he's calling out some witches. Let's get to it. That microphone is expensive. Don't hit microphones. And why is this why is this a Sunday sermon? If you're gonna represent Christ and Jesus, what is the point of this? And what is the end game? Three of you in the room right now. Okay. You better look in my eyeballs. We ain't afraid of you, you stinking witch. You devil worshiping Satanist witch. We cast you out in the name of Jesus Christ. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to stop you there, Greg. We cast you out. Well, unless they got cast out when you said that, I'm sure they're still sitting there. And what are you trying to do? Are you trying to get them violently hurt? Like, what are you trying to do? Is this, is this a responsible man of Jesus who is a pastor over churches? You're trying to like incite violence towards these people who cares if they're witches at your church. That's probably where they should be. If you think, if you believe what you believe, if you honestly believe in the redeeming virtues of Christ and Jesus, that's where the witches should be. If you're so confident in your ability to preach Jesus, Hey, this is an opportunity, Greg, but you're just sitting here shouting at them and you're trying to call them out because you think they're there to cast spells on you. You're a 
I don't say this lightly, Pastor Greg. I don't say it lightly at all. Get a grip, bro. You're crazy. We break your spells. We break your curse. They're like, Leviosa. No, no, no. It's Leviosa. Okay, yeah. They're sitting there making like spells and shit. Something tells me this guy doesn't like Harry Potter. <laughs> Actually, I think I heard that he did a book burning with Harry Potter. Just read Harry Potter, man. You're going to love it. It's really good. It's got a lot of great messages. We got your first name. We got your last name. We even got an address for one of you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> like, I'd be sitting there like, okay. What are you going to do about it? Again, churches are like, are you saying uh, this and this again? No churches would ever speak on this type of behavior because, but this is actually what they think. We don't want people here like that. We don't want the witches here. We don't want the people that don't believe. Why are you here? But again, what are you trying to do here, dude? That's this is like low level, really, really, really crazy. You're trying to incite violence against people that don't believe what you believe. But again, let me reiterate it. Why don't you want them there? This is where they should be. If you want them to hear the gospel, if they're witches, you think they're Satan, devil worshiping, crazy people with, you know, cauldrons and shit. And I have new bat and scrotum of lock. This is where they should be. So what are you so scared of, bro? You get the protective blood of Jesus over you. No, you don't. No, no. I know that Jesus loves everybody. Jesus does love, does love Pastor Greg Locke. But, you know, Jesus also would be at a church like this flipping shit over and saying, don't listen to this guy. Well, you probably say nicer than I would. But Jesus doesn't, like, this isn't representative of Jesus. Please don't take what this guy says. and Yeah, that's what Jesus is. And that's the problem. Because there's so many problematic pastors out in the world right now that they, this is what they think the church is made up of. You so much as cough wrong and I'll expose you in front of everybody on this tent, you stinking witch. But you're anti-mask and anti-COVID and everything else, so why can't they cough? <sighs> this guy is crazy. Anyway, I'm pointing to this behavior because if you don't think this way he treats his wife, you're wrong. This is how he treats his wife. Okay, Anybody can get up in front of a microphone and be emboldened to speak like this about people as a Christian, as a Jesus, as a person who's supposed to love people? Does that sound like someone who loves people? Jesus says love your enemies. Sounds like these witches are your enemies, Greg. So what are you doing here? Sounds like you hate these people. And you shouldn't. You dumbass. You were sent to this church to destroy us. You were sent to this church to lure us in. You were sent to this church to cast spell. Listen, some of you been sick because you befriended that witch. <laughs> is he, is this like a euphemism for like COVID? Does he think COVID is a witch? So I, I guess the, the the thing that's going on right now is that he is anti-COVID. Like, he doesn't even think it exists, right? And again, pro-vaccine, everybody, anti-mandate. But um, yeah, COVID exists, okay, and has killed people. And apparently, he doesn't allow people to wear masks, and he he tells people not to get vaccinated, all that kind of stuff. If you want to know the dangers of rhetoric like that, it's not Joe Rogan you should be looking at. It's guys like this. Because apparently someone did die of it in his church. And so he's trying to bling the witches. But something tells me that those witches aren't witches. It probably tells me there's whistleblowers. Like, it starts with a W, though. You got, you're close there. There, Greg Locke, you dumbass. Two of you in my wife's ladies Bible study, and you know who you are. Which wife? The new wife? Maybe your wife's a witch, Greg. Did you ever think about that? Alahamora, or whatever the spell is. And we gonna ask you to get out, or I'll expose you in front of everybody. Well, if you're asking them to get out now, they're going to stand up and leave, so they'll be exposed. So I don't think that's going to work. But the witches, if you are at Pastor Greg Locke's church, can you please come talk to me? I would love to have a conversation with you, honestly. Like, I would love to just get your point of view. I'd love it. Um, but again, don't forget, everybody, that this is a guy running a church that makes tons of money, too. Like, it's got Nord. There's a Nord stage, too. That piano's like three grand. We got all six of their names. All oh, six of them. Okay. Two. What are their names? Well, it had already been confirmed for that thing. Ever even said it. It's like he's gossiping to his his congregation. He's like, uh, look, I got their names. <laughs> we got the hot tea here on Sunday. We got the tea and the witches. Everybody sitting in this audience. If, <laughs> this is what scares me the most about churches. People are like, yeah, amen. Amen to what? What are you amening? Do you know what amen means? Let it be so. Let the Lord do it. <laughs> let the Lord do what? Look at this guy. This is, he's delving hot gossip tea right in front of his congregation. And they're all like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? Now everybody thinks there's a witch. There's a lady sitting next to him as a witch. 
if somebody gets hurt because of Greg Locke's rhetoric, better better be careful, bro. First and last night, this chick is new to our church and don't know none of you. Okay. So you got a choice. You can leave with your spells. <laughs> oh. <laughs> your spell. Honestly, read Harry Potter, man. Just do it. Your spells. What does he think? Again, if you're protected by the blood of Jesus and all this shit that they believe, uh, what are you scared of, dude? Spells will be ineffective against you. What are you scared of? All by yourself. That's a nice ass guitar. See that one right on his left, the 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 cream colored Fender. Oh, mm. oh! I'll show up next Sunday with a stage full of brooms, and I'll give you one, and I'll fly your tail up out of this place in the name of Jesus. But we ain't. Oh, in the name of Jesus, I'm going to do some violence. In the name of Jesus, I'm going to be a hypocrite asshole. In the name of Jesus, I'm going to cheat on my wife. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. In the name of Jesus, I'm an asshole. Playing your spell casting witchcraft nonsense, sage burning games. Hey, sage smells nice. Sometimes depends. Everybody okay? <laughs> hey, what's, what's going on, everybody? <laughs> this is amazing. I got to watch some more of this guy's sermons. The witches are like, nope. No, the witches are laughing at your ass. They're like, yep. <laughs> I'm going to cast some spells on this mofo. I hope those spells work too. Can you cast one on him that like, I don't know. Can you cast one on him that gives him like a kidney stone or something? Because those shits hurt. Like, I don't know. Cast one that like gives him really long nipple hairs. Just like. Maybe cast one on him that makes his sock fall off in his shoe like every day for the rest of his life. Cast one on him so when he's having a shower and it's really hot, it just turns cold all the time. Oh, that would be good. Cast one on him that it shows his internet history. <laughs> oh, I love to see that shit. Cast one on him so there's just like one fruit fly that flies around his house like for he can't he can't catch it. That shit, and he kills it, and then another one comes right in his place. Cause I have that spell here. There is one fruit fly, kill it, and then another one. It's not like there's two fruit flies in here. There's one, I kill it, then there's another one waiting for me to kill his friend. That spell. Do that one. You do a spell that like rips, rips the crotch of his pants every time he moves. <laughs> Just cast some spells, please, before you have to leave. And your little dog too. You're out, witch. So he's he's doxing her here. He's that she's got a dog. All right. So that was kind of funny. I thought that was hilarious. Um, and then the, uh, this is Duchess. She reposts this video now. I, okay, now I'm in the now I'm in down the Pastor Greg Locke rabbit hole. I'm not leaving. This shit is amazing. I love this stuff. Hey, welcome back to Why I Left the Church Televangelist Edition. So she's an ex Christian. Why she left the church. There's a lot of people deconstructing. It's a really, really big movement right now. And it's a necessary movement. It absolutely is. And it's why I left the church, everybody. Not not always why I left Jesus. Some people do, but it's not why they left Jesus. It's why they left the church. Those two are separable, big time. Especially now in the way the modern church is. This week's special guest is none other than COVID-denying, misinformation spreading, two-time winner of a Twitter ban, working on a third. Hey. <laughs> I low level have a crush on this girl. Hate filled man of God, Pastor Greg Locke. This is going to be a long one because he's just that heinous. If you're not <laughs> familiar with Greg, he runs Global Vision Bible Church, where he, of course, has a. Let me see their website. If it's garbage, I'll be pissed. Global Vision Bible Church. Let's take a look, Shave say, Mr. Greg Locke. Uh, hey, not bad. Welcoming you home. We'd like to welcome to our church, unless you're a witch. We accept everyone just as they are, not if you're a witch. We accept everyone just as they are. But we love you too much to let you say stay that way. <laughs> what? Come and grow with us as we seek God's will and show his love. This is his new wife. Uh, not really much of an upgrade, but whatever. How do people still go to this church after knowing he cheated on his wife? Even even if you believe you're a fundamental Christian like this, you, be, you can't believe in divorce. You're not allowed to. So, hypocrite, liars. What draws people to this place, man? Dang. Let's go to About Us real quick. Global Vision Bible Church. He's got a picture of his wife. He's probably a pastor now. Cough. We believe the Bible is a perfect word of God. We believe the salvation is provided by Jesus Christ alone. We believe in the eternal salvation of believers. We believe in the Bible Trinity. We believe in the local New Testament. Okay. We believe the baptism is a fundamental step of obedience. Doesn't. Okay. So far, it's pretty surface level shit, but like, what's going on here? I need to go to this church. I'm going to this church. Where is it? Georgia or something? All right. So that's garbage. Let's continue. 
sign out front that said, this is a mask-free church campus. We celebrate faith over fear. Okay. I'm not even going to touch on the fact that he told his congregants not to get vaccinated because COVID isn't real, resulting in one of his congregants dying. Yeah, that's the one, if that's true. <sighs> Again, don't come after Joe Rogan. This is your target. Or the fact that he threw a hissy fit on Facebook about gender-neutral bathrooms. Because I want to talk about who Greg really is. Trigger warning. This is Greg's first wife, Melissa, with whom he had four children. Greg claims that they got divorced because she has severe mental illness. But Melissa has a bare... He also gets criticism. Very different story. Melissa said that Greg hit her repeatedly, shamed her for gaining weight after he had paid thousands of dollars for her weight loss surgery, was emotionally abusive, and called her a deceitful bitch. Now I know. I believe that. Just by watching that one sermon, I've, n I've never seen this guy before. Just by watching the one where he's calling out witches in a church that's supposed to be for love and acceptance and like grace and understanding. It's not supposed to be a place of tea and it's not supposed to be a place of, of, of anger and vitriol and, and gossip. That guy was a, that guy had an opportunity and he wasted it. That could be perceived as hearsay, but hard to make something up when you never see. Oh, okay. I have not put any, I've not put any weight on or anything. I lost weight. I'm getting close to my cycle and my stomach is bloated. I've even lost more since I've been home. Well, then your stupid haircut made your face look fat. I'm not arguing about it. Do what you want. As, a stra as strange as it is, that hurt me more than anything and totally shut me off from you. The weight gain he's talking about. Get back, get back here today or tomorrow on these papers. I think it's a divorce thing. I can order you an Uber. Riding with that idiot was dumb, Melissa. Shut me off. I did not cut my hair and I... And a spy gun is my heart. I don't know what I. He's an asshole. That's what that text says. Here's Melissa justifying her weight gain because she's about to start her period. But of course, he doesn't want to hear that. He then sends Melissa this heartfelt love letter. If it wasn't for the ministry, I'd divorce you before sunup. Greg Locke told his wife on the phone. It was midnight, and Locke had left his house to get away from a heated marital quarrel. He stayed the night at GVBC. When morning came, he had more words for his wife. You know, Melissa, I just don't want you anymore. I don't care if you die and we have a funeral. I'll just shed a few tears over you. I don't care if you take all the pills in the house. I just want you not in my life. Okay. All right. When Jesus reads that to you and you get judged, I, I hope I'm there. I'm like, oh shit, is that Greg Locke? He's going to, oh, is Jesus going to read the text messages? Oh shit, let's do this. I'm up there like. Looking at his face. Oh shit, this could be good. Okay, Greg, you're a twat. You know, Melissa, I just don't want you anymore. I don't care if you die and we have a funeral. I'll just shed a few tears for you. Now, from what I have read, Melissa did suffer from mental illness. But I'm well, pretty sure a traumatic fucking environment would do that to anyone. The Duchess has spoken, and she's right. So, did Greg honor his marital vows, you know, in sickness and in health? Of course oh. not. As soon as that ink dried, he ran to the altar to marry his assistant. So he got mar married right away, and he's trying to say, no, we're having a divorce. Well, okay, whatever. We don't believe you. Nobody believes you. Church secretaries are some of the finest people I've ever met. But some that, of all like the, the moral failings of pastors, it's like generally the church secretary, right? <laughs> just saying. Church secretaries be up in the streets just being crazy. Who just happened to be Melissa's former best friend. And of course, delinquent on alimony and child support. And even though Greg has preached that he's against divorce. Okay. I still preach against divorce. I'm in a series right now in Ephesians. I'm encroaching on chapter five. You know, I'm going to have to preach about marriage. Husbands love your wives. The Christ loves the church. That's a difficult balance right now, but I'm going to have to learn a better way to be a way better husband than I was the first. <laughs> I got a second chance at marriage, dude. Damn. You gross. This statement in particular, I find fascinating. He says, I still preach against divorce, but now I'm going to have to learn to be a way better husband than I was the first go around. So Melissa was telling the truth. Yep. That's what I thought. Duchess. You. So I found her and there's so much. So this is just the, <laughs> this is just the tip of the iceberg. So Pastor Greg Locke, and as an ex-pastor, guys, I, I feel like this is right, kind of right up my alley. I love this type of conversation with you guys a lot of people come from church grew up in church were hurt by church and this is a safe place to talk about that shit a lot of people are like why are you hurt you're speaking from a place of hurt again even with my even with my upbringing people think it's that i should not be allowed to have that view on bad moms because i grew up with a bad mom 
Yeah, I can. It's my lived experience. So yeah, I have way different insight. People have been hurt by the church. You should be allowed to speak without being told you can't. A lot of you were scared. Don't be scared anymore. You're allowed to be angry. You're allowed to call the church out. The church does not equal Christ. Okay. Especially the modern church. I think the modern church is more devoted to Christ than any, than it ever has been at any time in our history. It is a, again, a monolith built in the image of the pastors that run them. So pastor Greg Locke, your church is nasty. It looks, it looks nasty. Like you remember the Blair Witch Project where they, at the end when they were in that little weird house, that reminds me of what Greg Locke church is probably like. He's a predator and he's disgusting and he's a hypocrite. And all of those things equal, you should not be on a stage preaching from the Bible because you are absolutely the antithesis of what Jesus would want up there representing him. Just saying, come at me. So hmm, happy Sunday, everybody. If you're going to tithe, okay, make sure you do it. Otherwise, not to a church. I've got a whole video on it. Just saying, don't tithe the church anymore. Stop going to church. Unless it's a really good church, which I have yet to find. Anyway, everybody take a deep breath. May the Lord keep you and keep you away from that church too. That would be great. Pastor Greg Locke is a dick, but you are amazing. And I hope you have an amazing day and I will see you tomorrow.